Well guys, I have some bad news and some good news. The bad news is that we are closing in on 5,000 subscribers and I am not ready for my 100 jig giveaway. I announced in one of my videos that that was my target around the 5,000 subscriber mark to be done with the 100 jig giveaway. And to be honest with you, I'm not even close. Right after I set that goal, a couple of unrelated videos on my channel exploded and my rate of growth more than tripled. Now when this happened, I could have just spent all of my spare time whipping together some jigs for you guys, a bunch of ordinary run-of-the-mill crappie jigs just to get it done, but I didn't want to do that. I want the jigs in my giveaway to be creative, unique, effective, and I want there to be a lot of variety, so I'm not going to rush through it. So anyway, that's the bad news, but there are a couple of pieces of good news as well. Number one, my channel growth more than tripled. That is absolutely insane. So thank you guys so much for that. And also I'm still doing the 100 jig giveaway and it's going to be free and easy to enter. And all you need to do now is just subscribe and hit the bell notifications if you wanna be notified when the giveaway goes live, if you're interested in winning 100 custom hand tied jigs. All right guys, in today's video, we are going to be tying a huge pike jig on the three quarter ounce swim bait jig head by VMC. And this jig will incorporate a very popular and effective red and white streamer pattern tied with rabbit and arctic fox zonkers, along with some flash. And excluding our thread, resin, and glue, this jig only requires the use of three materials, so it's very, very simple. The first thing we wanna do is remove the little bait keeper hooks. I am now going to lay down a base layer of thread, and today I'm tying with some Uni Big Fly 360 denier thread in white color. Now we're going to lay down this base layer of thread along the hook shank all the way to the start of the hook's bend. And once I've finished laying down that base layer of thread, I want to take my thread and move it back up a quarter inch away from the start of the hook's bend, and right here in that spot, I'm going to form a bump of thread. I'm just going to continue to wrap the thread in that same spot just to build it up. And we're going to create a bump and what that's going to do is allow us to add some extra security to our tail and you'll be able to see that when we tie in the tail. After creating that bump, I'm going to move the thread up another quarter inch all right, next we are going to tie in the tail. And for that, I'm going to be using a white Magnum rabbit strip by Hairline. Now the hair on your rabbit strip is going to naturally fall toward one end. And with the tail, we want our hair falling back toward the tip of the tail. So this end here is what we're going to be using for the tail. So first at the tip of my tail here, I'm going to cut the end of the hide at a slight angle here. And what that's going to do is create a nice little taper right at the end of the tail. And in doing this, I wanna make sure that we cut away as little hair as possible. So I'm going to take my scissors right at the corner here and I'm gonna slide that in close to the hide at about a 45 degree angle. And then I'm just going to cut through that hide. Now, as you can see, that hide is coming to a point and as a result, we have a nice taper here at the end of the tail. Next, I'm going to measure out a tail that is about one inch longer than the jig, and then I'm going to add another half inch, and I'm going to cut right at that spot in the hide. And just like before, when I make this cut, I'm going to slide my scissors in as tight to that hide as possible, so I'm not cutting any more hair than is necessary. After cutting off that piece of the rabbit strip for our tail, I'm now going to pluck the hair from the first half inch of the hide, and that's going to give us a nice clean piece of hide to tie into the hook shank. After plucking the hair from the first half inch of that hide, I'm then going to take my tail here, and I'm going to push the hook point through the underside of the rabbit strip, right where the hair begins. So I'll just line the hook point up in the center of that hide and push it through right at the start of that hair. Once the hide has passed the barb of our hook, we can go ahead and release this from the vise. And then I'm going to slide my tail right up to the hook shank, and then I'm going to place it back into the vise. Once our tail is in position, we can go ahead and flip this over 
and get ready to tie it in. Okay, now pike are mean toothy critters, so we're going to be taking some extra measures just to increase the security of the materials we're tying in and the overall durability of the jig. So before I tie in the tail, I'm just going to place a single drop of super glue right on top of that thread bump that we created. Now I'm going to line up my tail right on top of the hook shank and make sure that it's coming out the back in a straight line and just hold it on top of that super glue for just a few seconds. Once that glue has started to dry, I'm now going to tie in this tail to the hook shank all the way back to the start of the hook's bend using some tight wraps. And since we now have wraps in front of and behind that thread bump that we created, that's going to add a lot of security and work tremendously to prevent this tail from being pulled off. And now that we've made wraps all the way back to the start of the hook's bend, I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to wrap that back up to the front of that piece of hide. After tying in that tail, we are then going to flip this over and I'm going to add some additional security using some Solares Thin Hard Bone Dry UV Resin. So first I'm going to take my brush and I'm just going to cover all of the wraps that we made around the end of that rabbit strip. After saturating those thread wraps, I'm then going to hit that with my Solares High Power UV Light. And I'll just check to make sure that that resin has fully cured and has become hard. And now I'm going to take my brush again and I'm going to cover the first three quarters of an inch of this rabbit hide at the beginning of the tail. After covering that first three quarters of an inch, I'm then going to also hit that with my Solares High Power UV Light. So now what we've done with that UV resin is solidify these wraps holding the tail in place and we've also stiffened that first three quarter inch section of that tail and what that's going to do is prevent this tail from fouling up on the hook. With that done we are now going to tie in some flash with our tail and for that I'm going to be using some polar flash in opal mirage color. So here I've got five total strands of that flash material and what I'm going to do is fold this in half over my thread and tie it into the underside of the hook shank here all the way back to the base of the tail. After I've tied that into the base of the tail, I'm just going to wrap my thread back up again in front of that rabbit hide. Now we want our flash to be about equal to the length of our tail, and in this case it comes out just about perfect, so I don't need to mess with that, but I do want to create some taper in this flash by creating some variable length by just taking my scissors here about the midway point, and I'm gonna start cutting some of that material back all the way back to the tip of the tail. After tapering that flash, I'm then going to apply a little bit more bone dry over the thread wraps that are holding this flash in place just to add some additional security. After solidifying those wraps, it's time to move on to the body. And for that, I'm going to be using the remainder of our white Magnum Rabbit Strip by Hairline, in addition to a red Arctic Fox Zonker, also by Hairline. So to prepare the Rabbit Strip, I'm going to go to the opposite end of the one that we used for our tail, and I'm going to pluck the hairs off the first half inch of that hide. Once the first half inch has been stripped bare, I'm going to tie that in top side down to the hook shank, right back to the base of the tail. After tying that in back to the base of the tail, I'm then going to make wraps back up in front of that rabbit hide. And now we are going to solidify those wraps with some more bone dry UV resin. Once those wraps are nice and solid, I'm going to move my thread up all the way to the front of the jig head and then completely out of the way using my bobbin holder out of frame. And now it's time to wrap this rabbit strip around the hook shank to start forming our body. But before we do, I wanna prepare this rabbit strip by just getting some water on my fingers and thumb. And I'm just going to stroke this rabbit hair back 
getting it wet. And we're just gonna keep stroking that back out straight all along the rabbit strip. And what that's going to do is prevent us from trapping these hairs as we perform the wraps. And we're also going to be laying down some super glue onto the hook shank. And we don't want our hair getting stuck up in that super glue. So once I've got this hair nice and wet and slicked back where it's not going to be in the way, then I'm going to lay down a thin line of super glue about three quarters of the way up the hook shank. And once I lay that glue down, I need to act quickly with my wraps. That way the glue doesn't dry before we get there. And as I'm performing these wraps, I just wanna make sure that I'm just slightly overlapping the previous wrap each time I go around. All right, once we've reached the point where only about a half inch remains of our bare hook shake, we wanna go ahead and tie off the end of this rabbit strip by wrapping underneath it a couple of times. And then we're going to wrap in front of it tightly about five or six times. And then we can go ahead and trim off that rabbit strip close to the hook shank. After trimming that off, I'm gonna go ahead and perform some additional tight wraps just over the end of that rabbit strip just to make sure that it's extra secure. All right, once I have secured the end of that rabbit strip, I'm going to take some of my bone dry and I'm going to brush that over about three to four inches of thread here. Make sure I get it nice and covered with that bone dry UV resin. And once I have a decent amount there on my thread, I'm going to wrap that around the end of that rabbit strip. And that resin on the thread is going to soak into those wraps underneath it. And then I'm going to move my thread up close to that jig head. And now I'm going to hit it with my UV light to solidify those wraps. All right, now it's time to finish the body with a red Arctic Fox Zonker. And we're going to prepare it the same way by stripping bare the first half inch of that hide. All right, once I have stripped the hair away from that first half inch of our Arctic Fox Zonker, I'm going to wet my finger and thumb and I'm going to stroke back this rabbit hair just so it's out of the way. And then we're going to tie in the Arctic Fox Zonker. And just like with the rabbit zonker, I'm going to tie this in top side down. After tying that in, I'm going to wrap back up to the front of the jig head. And then I'm gonna get my thread out of the way using my bobbin holder. If you haven't guessed already, we're going to solidify these wraps now with some of that Solares bone dry. And now I'm going to lay down a single line of super glue on the remainder of our hook shank and we're going to wrap this zonker up to the jig head and this is going to add a tremendous amount of volume and color to our jig. Once I have reached that jig head, I'm going to give my super glue about 10 seconds or so to dry and then I'm going to tie off the end of the Arctic Fox zonker. After tying off the end, I'm going to slide my scissors in and trim that as close to the hook shank as possible. After trimming off the remainder of that zonker, I'm going to make some additional wraps around the end of it, but first I'm going to wet my fingers and stroke back this Arctic Fox hair just so I don't trap any of that hair. After wrapping that in securely, I am then going to stroke back this Arctic Fox hair and secure that with a little material clip here, just like that. And then I'm going to apply some more of the bone dry UV resin to my thread. All right, we are now going to wrap in our resin soaked thread and then we're gonna whip finish on top of that three times. After completing the whip finish, I'm going to trim my thread. And then we are going to hit that with our UV light. Now I can go ahead and remove my material clip here. 
And voila, look at this crazy jig, you guys. It is about seven inches in length from the tip of the tail to the nose. And it's got all this crazy bulk and color up front and this flash in the back. But now let's talk about fishing this jig because that's going to be important for whoever wins the giveaway because I'm putting a couple of these in there. This jig can certainly be fished in still water, but it's really designed for rivers, specifically deeper rivers between 10 and 30 feet deep. We have a three quarter ounce head here to help get this jig down closer to the bottom in those deeper rivers with faster current. And just to give you an example, the St. Clair River is one that would be perfect for this jig. When this jig is down in the fast current, this bulkier section up front here with the Arctic fox hair will actually lay back and these hairs will pulsate like crazy. It's gonna have a ton of action and definitely draw some strikes. All right guys, my mini testing tank is laughably small for a big jig like this, but we're gonna try it anyway and hopefully you guys will be able to get a glimpse of what this thing does in the water. Okay, for those of you who did not have a childhood, that was Falcor from The NeverEnding Story. And the movement of this jig looks a lot like Falcor when he's flying, so that's why I call it the Falcor. But it's a bunny jig, it's a pike jig, you can call it whatever you want. Anyway, thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day to watch my video, and I hope you did enjoy it. I'm going to be pumping out more awesome jig patterns as quickly as I can until I get to 100 so I can do my 100 jig giveaway. And as a reminder, if you want to be eligible to win that, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification so you get notified when the giveaway goes live. And I'll see you in the next video.